ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द हिस्टोलॉजी दैट इज द सेवेंथ यूनिट एंड वी कैन सी दैट टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वेयर वी आर गोइंग एंड व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न सो दैट इज द सेल व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन डिटेल एंड टिश्यू एंड इट्स स्टडी माइक्रोस्कोप व्हाट इज माइक्रोस्कोप एंड देन इट्स टिश्यू प्रोसेसिंग एंड स्टेनिंग ओके so in this class uh, what is animal cell first we should know that a cell is a mass of protoplasm enclosed in a semi permeable membrane okay. so cell is a mass of protoplasm enclosed in a semi permeable membrane and forms the basic structural and functional unit of all tissue so if functional as well as structural unit of all tissue and organ in animal body then the cell which do not possess any organized nucleus are known as prokaryotic cell and the nucleated cells which possessed by the eukaryotic cell then each cell is covered by a thin semi permeable membrane called cell membrane or plasma membrane this is described by davson and daniali the sandwich model which is known as next point what is nucleus the nucleus is a spherical dense body within the cytoplasm of the cell and composed of nuclear membrane chromosome nucleolus and nuclear sac after that what is cytoplasm cytoplasm is a semi solid jelly like substance which remains around the nucleus and enclosed by plasma membrane next thing active elements or organelles of the cell are first is the endoplasmic reticulum it is the site of synthesis and metabolism of fatty acid and phospholipid and site of modification of secretory protein as well as the organelle which is responsible for steroid hormone production and a smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum helps in the lipid metabolism as we can see in the photograph i will show you the photograph which we can see here that uh, this is the cell so endoplasmic reticulum means this is the nucleus we can see this is the nuclear core okay so this is the nucleus plasma membrane and this is the nucleolus then this is the nuclear envelope chromatin is there rough endoplasmic reticulum that greenish appearance is showing here and along with that the point pointed structures are the ribosome and outer to that a smooth endoplasmic reticulum is visible then golgi apparatus is red in color is showing here then microtubules cilia of the cell are visible centriole is this one these are the mitochondria here and then microfilaments lysosomes peroxisomes okay so these are the cell organelles remember this photograph now we will discuss uh, the remaining uh, cell organelles okay so first we discussed about the endoplasmic reticulum which is used for the fatty fatty acid metabolism as well as phospholipid metabolism and synthesis and site of modification of the secretory protein organelle responsible for the steroid hormone production so many hormones are steroid in nature that is produced or uh, with the help of this uh, cell organelle and smooth endoplasmic reticulum help in the lipid metabolism okay so lipid metabolism is uh, under the control of uh, this uh, endoplasmic reticulum after that golgi body so that helps in the package and modification of the protein and helps in the protein sorting so modification of secretory protein is under the control of uh, endoplasmic reticulum but uh, the golgi body which is helpful for the package and modification of the protein as well as help in protein sorting after that mitochondria that is known as power house of the cell that is production of adenosine triphosphate is uh, occur here next is lysosome is the another cell organelle which is also called as digestive system of the cell or suicidal bag which is rich in hydrolytic enzyme and it contain variety of enzymes enabling the cell to break down various biomolecules so means an undesirable thing which is found or comes in the cell that is uh, uh, with the help of hydrolytic enzymes that will remove out from the cell next is uh, ribosomes that attach to the endoplasmic reticulum as we have seen through the riboforin proteins and they are 
not membranous organelle then next is the centriole centrosomes is a dense zone of cytoplasm and remains close to the nucleus after that what is fibril and fibril fi filaments and plasmogens so these are very fine filament structures forms the network to give internal support to the cell and these fibrils are called myofibrils in muscle cell neurofibrils in nerve cell and tonofibrils in epithelial cell so this is uh, about the cell organelles now the cytoplasmic inclusions are also found that is food granules that is uh, called as the carbohydrate protein and fat each and every cell is having this food granules and pigment is also there after that secretion granules are also found so we have discussed this uh, cell now come to the uh, this is the structural and functional unit as we know now come to the how we can study the cell how we can uh, study it in detail so the science which is called as histology so what is histology so histology or microanatomy which is a branch of anatomy which deals with the study of the tissue in living organism which deals with the study of the tissue in living organism it is commonly studied using light microscope and the specimen having been sectioned and stained and mounted on a microscopic slide then what is tissue the term tissue is derived from the french word which means the texture or weaves a tissue can be defined as collection of similar cells okay S collection of similar cells forming the tissue and a study of cell is called cytology and the collection of similar cell performs similar type of function and united by intercellular substance is called tissue now come to the next point what is microscope so a microscope is an instrument used to see the object that are too small for the naked eye and the science of investigation is small object using such an instrument is called microscopy and there are many types of microscopes and the most common and the first to be invested in the optical microscope which is uses uh, light to image the sample then other major types of microscope are the electron microscope that is including transmission as well as scanning electron microscope so for that if you want to see the cellular details each and every cell of the body or any tissue or any organ then transmission electron microscopy is responsible for that kind of uh, study and if you want to see the uh, external morphology orientation of the cell how it is appearing okay then scanning electron microscopy is responsible for that now we can see a single microscope here okay so this is the galileo microscope this is first uh, galileo is invented this uh, first microscope in 1609 okay where basically little my little telescope with the uh, same two lens a biconvex objective and biconcave eyepiece are kept here like this you can see observer is there then eyepiece then this is the intermediate image and then objective lens and light is focused so this is the principle for this is it is used now the most commonly used is the microscope is called as monocular microscope a single tube with interchangeable eyepiece at the one end that is this one and uh, one or more objective lens or uh, often an uh, on a revolving turret the other end we can see here this uh this one these are the objective lenses so these are the objective lenses and uh, we can see that uh, with uh, always look flat so monocular microscope will always uh, this object that is viewed through this uh, will look uh, flat and uh, with, without depth and monocular microscopes are used to study the true microscopic sized animals plant and cells so what are the different part of this uh monocular microscope this is called as body tube this is the eye piece and this is the eye lens or sorry objective lens then we can see here the stage clips here to hold the microscopic slide this is the diaphragm that is through which the light will focus okay and this is the base this is the fine uh, focus this is the coarse focus this is the stage this is the arm so the, with the help of these fine and coarse focus we can clear the image whatever is visible and another microscope that is also very useful very commonly used in our days that is a binocular microscope 
we can see here that the binocular microscope is any optical microscope with two objective lens or oh sorry two eyepieces to significantly ease viewing and uh, cut down and on eye strain and most co microscopes sold today are be uh, that is the binocular microscope through the interplay between the two lenses can differ depending on the microscope type so we are, can see here also the objective lens so this is the eyepiece or ocular lens this is the diopter adjustment this is the head this is nose piece this is the mechanical stage then this is frame this is stage control this is coarse adjustment this is fine adjustment this is light switch this is brightness adjustment this is illumination this is the condenser okay similarly here we can see the base now the tissue processing and for histology so this is a processing means this is a technique so tissue processing describes the steps required to take animal or human tissue from fixation to the state where it is completely infiltrated with a suitable media and can be embedded ready for the section cutting on the microscope. So this is the processing means we have to cut the section so that we can see that section in detail in uh, we can see that the detailed histology we can observe through the microscope only after the cutting the section so how we can uh, uh, this process the tissue we will see now and it involves the procedure of removing water from cells so what are the different steps removing water from the cells first then replacing it with a medium which solidifies allowing thin section to be cut on a microtome then tissue processing uh, so microscopic analysis of the cells and tissue requires the preparation of very thin high quality section okay mounted on a glass slide and appropriately stained to demonstrate normal and abnormal structure so microscopic analysis of the cell and tissue requires the preparation of very thin means it is in microns 2 to 4 to 5 micron thin uh, slice and high quality sections that is mounted on a glass slide and appropriately stained to determine demonstrate the normal and abnormal structure and most fresh tissue is very delicate and easily distorted and damaged and it is thus impossible to prepare thin section from it unless it is chemically preserved so we have to preserve it chemically or fixed it and support it in some way while it is being cut so what we will do now we will see step by step two strategies that can be employed to provide this support first is we can freeze the tissue we can freeze it and keep it frozen while we cut our section the first step is this and another is we can infiltrate tissue with an agent that can subsequently be converted into a solid so that as appropriate physical properties which can allow thin section to be cut from it so that is the paraffin wax so we will see how we will doing it we can see here first is the step that is involving the alcohol treatment of tissue this is the tissue with the help of alcohol which leads to the what will alcohol do so alcohol the places the water in the all cells okay so it is a dehydrating agent we can say Next is the xylene treatment. So xylene dissolve the alcohol means it is clearing. It is a now the clearing agent. It will remove the alcohol also. And then next point, next is the um, paraffin. So we will and the specimen should be kept in paraffin so that the paraffin displaces the xylene and the specimen is now ready to be embedded. So how we are doing it? So uh, the proper sectioning in order to get useful microscopic information to arrive at proper diagnosis is very important and it is important to emphasize the value of proper education and training for those carrying out tissue processing and the need to apply particular care when sectioning or setting up a processor for the processing. So mechanical or electrical fault or human error occasionally occur where tissue are actually compromised. What will happening? Churning. Sometimes churning will or burning of the tissue will have. So we have to be very careful. 
burning brittle tissue sometimes happen sometimes improper dehydration which leads to the improper clearing and improper orientation that will leads to the uh, damage of the tissue or even we can not get the good uh, section that will uh, very uh, means we can say that it is uh, time consuming process so after the whole processing if if any step is mistaken then what will happen your whole time will waste so we have to be very careful what are the steps we have to see here now collection of and identification of the tissue then fixation then dehydration then clearing then impregnation after that embedding then section cutting and then say staining and then mounting and after that examination under the microscope so first is the what is the tissue source means biopsy we can take necropsy and autopsy we can like tissue should be collected as early as possible after the death even uh, handled carefully and appropriate fixed immediately after the dissection now the size the size is matter so the tissue side uh, should be uh, not uh, larger than the four to five millimeter uh, if it is up to uh, 10 mm means uh, one centimeter is also okay but we have to uh, take it accordingly means maximum it should be there next if it's practical way but it is written that uh, four to five mm mostly but uh, in practically if we do it then it is possible to make the slide from the one centimeter uh, large tissue also and that is uh, sometimes required so i am telling this thing now it should be fit into the tissue cache without distortion so this thing is also very important it should be fit in the tissue cassette i will show you the tissue cassette in coming slide so it should be there in in a proper way without distortion a small if it is small then over processed maybe takes place and if it is very large then under process may be happening this kind of mistake then tissue should be identified by proper coding and name okay so if we are cutting the tissue we have to uh, with the help of pencil we have to write the uh, coding of the tissue or name of the tissue in a sim small size of uh, uh, cut paper and then we have to kept there inside the cassette along with the tissue for the processing because we have to kept this uh, tissue along with the cassette in different chemicals so if it is written in the pencil then it will not go it will be intact next write on a small paper for pencil to keep with tissue with inner tissue processing like this we can keep you can see the paper is visible and tissue is also there so we can see this is the cassettes we can keep the tissue inside this cassette and cover it with the help of uh, this cover these are the cover this is the cassette okay and then we have to make the coding and kept over there along with that then fixation the, the purpose of fixation is to preserve tissue permanently in the life and like like condition okay so fixation is should be carried out as soon as possible after the removal of the tissue and in the case of surgical pathology or uh, soon after death with autopsy to prevent autolysis the choice of fixative depend upon the type of investigation that is required it should be prevent autolysis and putrefaction of the cell it should harden the tissue increase optical density and must uh, not react with the uh, receptor sites and thus not interfere with the staining procedure and therefore a variety of fixative is available for use depending on the type of tissue present and feature of the to be demonstrated so fixation it, uh, there are five major group of fixative classified according to mechanism of action that is aldehydes we can use uh, formaldehyde butaldehyde we can use mercurials alcohol and oxidizing agent picrates we can use and volume of fixative should be 10 times that of the tissue then after that decalcification bone and other calcified specimen must be decalcified prior to processing and paraffin infiltration and most of the acid decalcifier should be washed away before processing to avoid contaminating the processing reagent and once the mineral has been removed a standard procedure processing schedule can be used so now washing so after proper fixation the tissue are cut in small blocks and kept in tissue capsule along with the identification mark written with pencil on small paper and then tissue capsule are then kept in running tap water overnight so we have to kept in a beaker uh, the all the tissue cassette and we and the running tap water should be kept overnight for that then different type of 
mold and tissue embedding cassettes are visible <laughs> this is the plastic this is the metallic this is the mold mold we are we are we using later so first first we should know this what is the cassette and you should know that disposable base uh, uh, molds we can see here and what is the use we will see later of this mold now first is the after the overnight capping that is uh, uh, the step that is uh, very important step which we have seen that is called what is that step is called so for washing it is called washing means we have to keep the tissue in one uh, four to five mm to one mm one centimeter uh, maximum and without damaging we can close the cassette and put it along with the marking and uh, coding and then overnight we can kept it in a beaker and a running tap water after that the next step is the dehydration so hydrophobic uh, water inside the specimen must be removed before it can be infiltrated with paraffin so that the dehydration is carried out by immersing specimen in ascending grades of alcohol that is 50 percent to 100 percent so alcohol progressively replaces water in all the cell of the specimen and great series of alcohol to avoid excessive distortion of tissue is required then most dehydrating reagent are alcohol ethanol methanol isopropyl alcohol and butanol so we can see here that like this uh, we can keep to it like 50 percent then 70 percent then 90 percent alcohol after that uh, 95 percent then alcohol one absolute alcohol then absolute alcohol two then absolute alcohol three okay like this we have to keep then and after that uh, alcohol plus benzene then benzene one absolute benzene that is the uh, benzene two and then benzene three like this we have to proceed okay and what is the timing so we will see in the coming uh, slide actually two two hours we have to kept here okay so one two hours two hours and one one and a half to two hour is also okay we can overnight kept in the 70 percent alcohol also up to this if according to our working uh, with, uh, with how we are getting the time like that we can uh, change it in this aspect 50 uh, alcohol 70 percent alcohol and uh, 75 percent alcohol after that two of two two hours we can kept and now after that clearing means uh, alcohol and paraffin are, no, are not miscible an intermediate solvent that is fully miscible with both such as xylene must be used so this solvent replaces the alcohol in tissue through the process called clearing so when we are kept here this we can see here the alcohol plus xylene or benzene we can use this is benzene 2 benzene 3 so this these steps here are part of clearing this is the clearing and this is the dehydrationing we are dehydrating up to here with the help of alcohol so clearing uh, uh, agent is another important role of clearing agent is to remove the substantial amount of fat from the tissue which otherwise present a barrier to paraffin infiltration that is adipocyte impeticytoplasm then clearing time crucial that is prolonged clearing may produce hard so we have to check it within after five minutes we have to kept in the xylene one for five minutes then we have to check it that it is cleared if it is cleared it will appear like semi-transparent type appearance but we have to uh, if it is in time is increased so time is very crucial important here so brittle tissue while inadequate clearing will make tissue externally difficult to section so this is very very important step we have to check again and again if it is appear semi-transparent then we have to remove from the uh, xylene or benzene then after that infiltration the tissue we have to taken out from the uh, this bottle which we have seen it that in, in this image in this image then after five minutes or ten minutes uh, whatever is uh, uh, according to tissue it time is varies now the, after that the infiltration so properly clear tissue are infiltered uh, using the molten paraffin okay when cooled solidifies to a consistency that allows sectioning on a microtome by providing structural support so multiple changes of paraffin are required to completely displace the clearing agent now the paraffin infiltration is greatly enhanced by vacuum and after infiltration step it is allowed to cool to a room temperature where it is solidified to a consistency that allows for sectioning now solidified uh, paraffin holds the cells and intercellular structure in their proper relationship it is also referred to as supporting medium.
next block making so we have to kept the uh, for infiltration purpose the uh, jar is inside the oven uh, we have to kept for uh, paraffin wax 1 2 and 3 the third one should be very clear it should be new paraffin molten mara paraffin and uh, because uh, that is very important because if, if it's any infill in anything which is not desirable or thick material or anything and impurities are found in the paraffin they, they will during the block making that will come and that will lead to the improper sectioning sometimes the tissue will bro uh, the section blocks will broken down due to the impurities or undesirable things which is found in the uh, paraffin so it should be filtered clearly now block making so now that specimen is thoroughly infiltrated with wax it must be formed into a block which can be clamped into a micro chrome for section cutting a small amount of molten wax is poured into the rectangular space made by combining two l mold we will see in the coming image so we have to make like this two l mold like this we have to make okay then we have to pour the uh, molten paraffin up to uh, 5 mm uh, 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 we can say that depth and after that we have to cap the tissue and then we have to fill it this mold with the help of this molten uh, paraffin and we have to use the forcep that is a, uh, we can say that the forcep should be the same temperature so we have to keep the forcep also in the uh, we can see that uh, inside the uh, oven or uh, along with that uh, paraffin wax molten paraffin wax so that it not it should not be uh, stick in and in, into the tissue we have to put the tissue sometimes if it is cool the forcep uh, point is cooled then it will stick in the uh, forcep immediately the tissue is placed with the proper orientation then finally the space is in the mold is filled with the molten wax and put identification mark on paper to one side allow to get cool and harden so we have to stick like this we have to cut the paper and mark the coatings anything like cd whatever is according to us and then allow to get it cool and harden and then care should be taken to keep forcep used for handling tissue and tissue and wax at same temperature so this is very important like this we can see these are the mold we have to kept like this and fill like this and then paper should be stick like this and then after cooling we have to uh, hold it and uh, remove the uh, molds uh, and then in the block will appear like this so we can see now again the tap running water then 50 percent two per two hours two hours 80 percent 90 percent two hours we can uh, from one and half hour to uh, we can say that uh, increase the temperature to overnight in this range only then after that 95 then absolute one absolute two alcohol then xylene plus alcohol 30 minutes then xylene one xylene two xylene three 15 15 minutes but it can be vary according to the clearing agent and uh, the tissue type it can be decrease okay not increase but decrease next is paraffin one for one two hours then paraffin two for two hours we can kept here overnight also according to our feasibility then paraffin three over two hours after that block making i told you then trimming and sectioning of five to six micron with the help of microtome so tissue to sectioning the done using microtome trimming before use actual tissue sectioning the tissue block is trimmed to remove extra wax so we have to remove extra wax with the help of our vp blade so that we can fit it in the microtome easily and uh, the wax from the slides and uh, expose the tissue and the block is fixed to micro tome with the block holder and uh, 15 to 20 micron thick sections are to be to reach the tissue properly so after that we have to cut it very small size that is 5 to 6 micron or depending upon the uh, our requirement next thing is uh, sectioning we can see this is the old type of uh, micro tree microscope this is the semi automatic type of uh, micro dome this is the block holder similarly here this is the block holder this one okay this one is block holder this is the uh, razor or holder this is the base 
you can see this is the base and this is the handle this is the adjustment we can adjust in semi automatic type of micro tome like four micro tome we have to five four micro micron we have to cut uh, six micron or 10 micron or 20 micron because 20 micron is the cutting of the only paraffin if paraffin is more up above the tissue so we can cut first the paraffin with with the adjustment of this in case of semi automatic type of micro tome now uh, what is this we can see the ribbon after cutting the sectioning of the section with the help of micro tome the ribbon are coming because we have to move it the slide will this tissue in this this part will go up and down and ribbon is coming in this way that is the cut uh, part of the slice we can see very small very uh, very thin uh, section will come along with the paraffin that is in the form of ribbon so ribbon of properly cut section are taken to water bath from here it is taken on a glass slide made sticky glass slide made sticky by adding the gelatin or to the water bath so you can see this is the water bath this is the and we can put here the water with the help of uh, our beaker and along with that we have to make it this uh, means uh, one liter of water one to two tea spoon uh, full uh, that uh, gelatin we can add so that tissue whatever we have to put in this around the 30 temp degree centigrade temperature we have to maintain 30 to 35 and then what is we have to do here that uh, uh, degree Fahrenheit that is after that what we, we have to do in this uh, the tissue is coming that is uh, uh, we have to take it on the uh, microscopic slide and then uh, we can see here the H and E staining we have to do after putting the slide in some for two minutes in the micro uh, or that is the oven so that the extra uh, wax will melt and the tissue will stick early on the slide and after that uh, for uh, we have to proceed for H and E staining so what how we are doing this H and E staining we have to put the slide in the gyalin 1 for 2 minutes to 4 minutes like this similarly gyalin 2 then gyalin 3 after then gyalin plus alcohol after that absolute alcohol 1 absolute alcohol 2 that is also for 2 to 4 minutes then 95 percent then 90 then 80 then 70 and then 50 percent alcohol for 2 to 4 minutes after that distilled water we have to kept for 2 to 4 minutes then hematogyalin for 10 minutes we have to put the slide and then tap water for 4 to 6 minutes and acid alcohol if uh, it is very important then 4 to 2 5 minutes only then distilled water again one dip then ammonia water it is depending on the uh, type of staining if gematogyalin is very easily if it is getting along the tissue means the tissue is stained by hematogyalin if more staining is of the hematogyalin is done so acid acid alcohol will remove and if it is less stained or a very very faint or we can say that not very clearly uh, is uh, stained so ammonia water dip is required so that is the not mandatory accordingly we have to proceed after that distilled water dip after that eosin for two to five minutes that is the counter stain then after that uh, that will stain the, the nucleus and after that along with this and uh, all the slides we have to kept uh, the slide in 70 percent alcohol for one to two minute then 80 then 90 then 95 then absolute one absolute two so that uh, this is the dehydration procedure so that the water will go out and we have to make it along with that uh, xylin so that clearing will done xylin plus alcohol five minutes then xylin one xylin two ten minutes each and then we have to mount with the dpx so we have to pour a, a drop of dpx on the uh, uh, tissue on the slide and uh, then we have to kept the uh, cover slip and uh, for uh, one night we have can kept like this only to uh, dry it and after that we can observe in the examination uh, microscope and that is the permanent slide we have to make it like this and that is useful for years so this is the uh, how we are making uh, this is uh, we can see here okay this is the jars that is called the uh, uh, jar which is useful for uh, we can uh, use uh, uh, because these jars are having uh, 
space for that four to five slides along in a single time we can make like this okay and uh, this is the tray which we can kept like this after the staining for drying okay these are the small uh, sized uh, we can say that uh, we can kept ready to uh, ready to use the chemicals so that uh, if required we can easily fill this uh, jars immediately so this is all about the uh, staining and processing and whatever we have used so what we discussed today in summary we can say that uh, we have discussed about the animal cell it is different organelles after that we have seen the different parts of microscope after that we have seen what is the tissue and then what is the procedure which required to make the slide that is called processing after that we have seen the H and E staining so this is the basic things we should know what is H and E staining hematogyalin and eosin hematogyalin is uh, very H and E staining is very commonly used to visualize the tissue details so to see the nucleus to see the uh, type of the cell okay so this is very important type of staining was most commonly used to analyze or to visualize the tissue what type of cells are there okay so these things are we should know prior to discuss histology in detail so this is about the first lecture which we have discussed thank you